I'm Jack Reese. Welcome to Cineology, Episode 3, the podcast where cinema gets explained. And here we have our co-host today, Millie Halperin. How Hello. are you doing, Millie? I'm good. Yeah, you're doing good. great. You're doing great. Oh, why are you doing great today? Well, first of all, the new Loki episode came out, and oh boy, <laughs> that Oop. got me excited. Yep, I watched it too. Yep. Yep. I... I will say that I did enjoy it. Maybe I don't have the same enthusiasm as you, but I will say I did enjoy it. That's all I'll say. Yep. And yeah, we'll get some more. We'll get more on that in our first segment, which we'll be starting in a moment. As for myself, I'm doing pretty well today. I mean, today was rather uneventful. I watched the new episode of Loki as well. I watched the new Scott Pilgrim 4K Blu-ray that just came out. We're going to talk about that too. And I also watched a new short that Billy also watched as well. And we're going to talk about that in our first segment, What We Watched Recently. This is where we talk about, as the segment is called, What We Watched Recently. So, Billy, do you want to uh, talk about what you watched recently? Well, I guess since uh, you brought up the short you watched, I guess we should bring up The Simpsons, The Good, The Bart, and The Loki. The Loki. The Loki. Now, okay. Um, I'm not a Simpsons, like, lore expert, so I'm, like, 110% sure that this isn't canon to the Simpsons whatsoever. This is just a, a, a fun short. Um, I wonder if anything's even canon to the Simpsons anymore now that it's in season 32 or 33 or I, something. Right, right. Um, I, I, I enjoyed myself. I, I did watch it directly after watching episode, uh, five of Loki, um, because, you know... I wanted to make sure that there weren't any, you know, spoilers in that episode, in, in that six minute short. Yeah. I completely forgot it was coming out. I didn't even know Same. when it was dropping. Kind of like another thing we'll be talking about soon. But yep. uh, as for the special, I uh, did enjoy it. It was about two minutes long, not including credits, which I think is hilarious because four minutes are dedicated well, to credits. I mean, it was like two shorts in one, right? Because it actually, no, kind of three because we. Do, you, do we want to talk about? I mean, people must. By the time we uh, release this episode, I think most people may have watched it, so I guess we can talk a little bit about it. If you want to, sure. All right, so I guess the first, like, um, short, I guess, that's in within this, uh, whatever it is, I, I don't know what else to call it, short. Uh, we, see Lo- we see Odin basically <laughs> vanishing Loki into... Springfield. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that was that was funny. I I I really hope Anthony Hopkins reprised his role as Odin just to do that, because that that was really funny. That was kind of funny. <laughs> I need to look it up later, but I'm pretty like I I know 110 percent like straight up fact that uh, Tom Hiddleston played lo- like voiced Loki in in this short, and I find that uh, awesome. Yes, like hilarious. Did. And then. Hijinks ensue. Loki and Bart kind of switch places. Bart, I think, is is banished <laughs> because the the Springfield Avengers think he's Loki. Because apparently, like, so Bart was like, it was Loki, but it had Bart's voice, and yeah. and Loki was like disguised as Bart, so it was like a big switcheroo thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was wholesome. I mean, Homer tucked Loki in bed, which was really funny. Yeah. Uh, and I think it ended there. Oh, wait. The Springfield Avengers, they just chilled, I guess. Yeah. And then credits roll. And I'm like, wait a minute. There's like, a, like, there's still a lot of the, the short, quote unquote, left, including the credits. So I kind of waited. And then the Moe's, the Moe's Tavern scene. Yeah, that was great. That was funny when, uh, yeah, when Loki it, was. The world is dying. Yes. Um, Worth it. Was wait was Maggie? I'm not. I'm. I literally just watched it and I. I'm already forgetting like key moments in the short. I'm pretty sure this was in the quote unquote third part. I guess after yeah. the credits, it was like really really brief. I would not remember. I don't remember. I need to rewatch that, but yeah. Yeah, I don't even remember if she was. I, I, I imagine she was in the dinner scene, but I don't know where else she, she was, was in the dinner scene. I don't remember. I else. don't remember. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There was a great segment, I believe, with uh, Ralph uh, as the Hulk. Ralph. Yep. 
That was that was such a random line too. Like, <laughs> that's so Ralph of him to do that though. The, I love the uh, reference to the first Avengers. Yeah. <laughs> Loki's oh yeah, when he was drive. yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> I yeah, that that was that was amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh oh yeah, and now I'm remembering they like straight like the 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 TVA sequence yes. when he was in the court. I forget what they were like referencing. I'm uh, just hijacking Disney Plus essentially. Like hijacking, yep. Mm -hmm. Which is like on brand for Loki, I guess. <laughs> Yep. So that that was that was amazing. That was amazing. Yeah. It was a fun little short. I mean, I did, it's not the first time that now that uh, Disney owns The Simpsons that they got to do something like this. They mm -hmm. also did this with Star Wars. They, they did this with Star Wars, yes. Yeah, with Maggie. Yep. Uh, this, uh, uh, the Force Awakens from his nap, which was yep. cute. This was better, personally. But I forgot when that came out. I think this was around Star the time. Star Wars Day. Yep. I was going to say this was around the time of the first episode of Bad Batch came out because it came out as like an hour long, like special episode, like on May the 4th. Yeah. And yeah. So. Exactly. A little sidebar material. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. Overall, I'd say give it a watch. I mean, it's pretty short, mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's a I'd say it's worth your time. If you like Simpsons and you like Marvel, this is definitely going to mm -hmm. be something you're going to want to watch. What, what Disney crossover do you want? to see the Simpsons do next after this Marvel thing. Well, they already did the two big ones, so, uh, well. They could do, like, the X-Men, or... Maybe. Or, because they're already Fox, That's so... That's true. They could, I mean, they could pay, they do, you know, Mickey and Friends. I could, I would like to see um, Night, Night at the Museum and the Simpsons. Ooh, Night at the Museum, that would be funny. Or Home Alone. Or Home Alone. They could do like a Christmas special or something. Yeah, they could. They could. Yeah, they like, could. That they, they makes leave sense. Maggie Home Alone. Ooh, in in the burglars from from you know. And the Wet Bandits. The Wet Bandits. <laughs> it's been years since I've seen Home Alone, so please it's please okay. correct me on on character names here. Uh, yeah. That yeah. that makes I yeah. I would one Disney would one hundred and ten percent do a Home Alone yeah. Simpsons crossover. I, either that or Bart. That could be perfect. Or Bart, yes. yes. I think, I feel like Bart would make more sense. Yeah, it would. Because, like, him and Kevin McHale, like, Kevin would, are, yeah, like, basically they, the same character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would so, agree. Yeah. Yeah, I would watch that. Okay, so let's move on to... Let's move on. ...something else. I'm going to do something yeah. I watch. Sure. So let's talk about Zola. Zola. Worst A24 movie yet. So A24, you've heard of them, right? Is that a production company? They're, yeah, they're a studio. They do a lot of indie work. Gotcha. Uh, they made The Disaster Artist, by the way. The movie uh, based on the making of The Room. Right, right, right. I barely even remember the movie right now. That's how bad it is. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, I reviewed wow. it. It's basically about two... Oh, this one girl. This is based on tweets, apparently. Uh, based, it's based on tweets. On, based on this tweet storm that this one girl happened to let out in 2015 and apparently they wanted to make a movie on it and this one girl she joins this other girl they go down to tampa florida and they well dance for money essentially let's put it that way and say to say it's weirdly put together because there's times where it looks like I, mean, I mentioned again this is an indie studio it looks like something that is from a higher up studio with more production value and then you get these sequences that look like they're out of a YouTube vlog. It just, it's so discombobulated. I was not a fan of it. Riley Keough, who, by the way, I found out is Elvis Presley's granddaughter, supposedly. Oh. Yeah, she's in this movie. She was also in, I think, Mad Max Fury Road. But she's in this movie as Stefani, the, uh, the, yeah, the stripper. Uh, the, the, one of them, I should, I should say. And her accent's awful. I'm just gonna say it. I, the, the I watched an interview with her with Jimmy Fallon. That's not a real voice, but apparently I think she put on this southern accent that every time I heard it, it just it's like going through a cheese grater. It I don't even know. I don't even want to say it. I don't want to offend anybody. Okay. Do you want to move on since you don't want to talk about it? 
Let's see. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else to say. Okay, I will give one positive. The okay. supporting cast. I did like the supporting cast, but that's pretty much the only positive I have. They are, they added some sort of dynamic feel to the movie, but that's about it. Now I'm going to move on. Let's say uh, you were going to talk about a movie uh, or a TV show that you wanted to talk about? Sure. Since we talked about Simpsons, The Good, The Bart, and The Loki earlier, might as well jump into... Loki episode five. Loki episode five. Okay. The so. one that came out uh, today, July seventh. July seventh, as we're recording this uh, episode. So I will not be uh, delving into this episode because obviously people want to watch it. So I'm not going to be getting into the episode that much. But all I can say is I am curious how they're going to end this sh- this season or show. I don't remember if they confirmed a season two of this show if they're only doing you know the mini the mini sodes like just the one season like falcon and winter soldier i hope they i hope the last episode is good i would have to agree um yeah yeah again no spoilers i won't say much yeah a lot of cgi in it though yes oh my god it felt like the finale of wandavision times two Mm mm-hmm I guess I could talk about the Loki variants a little bit since that was in the previous episode from last week's. Richard E. Grant was great. <laughs> That's all I can say. Yeah, Kid Loki's great. Croc Loki, oh my God, yes. Yeah, uh, Croc Loki is fun. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So Go watch Loki episode five if you haven't already. Yeah, I would agree. And obviously also watch the previous episodes if you haven't got into Loki. Yes. And if you haven't, what 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 are you doing? <laughs> what else have you watched, Jack? What else have I watched? Uh, for the first time ever, I should say from start to finish, I watched Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. So if you follow me on the scene before, where some of you might be listening to this, I am doing a review series called Pirates of the Caribbean, The Chest of Reviews. And for the first time, I'm going through all five Pirates of the Caribbean films because I really have not seen any of them. I saw the first one. I rented it from Blockbuster when I was a kid, but I barely remembered it. Uh, Then I watched it again when I, well, I should say a week and a half ago. That's when I last watched it. It was fun. I mean, I'll say that I watched that recently too. That was pretty fun. I think Johnny Depp was perfect casting for for Jack Sparrow. I'm not going to get into the controversy between him and Amber Heard, but he was very good casting for that role. I think that that movie has a weird sense of goofiness that somehow works for it that I cannot really find in any other film. It felt like, okay, I said this in my review and I'll say it again. It feels like a modern day Princess Bride, but that's PG-13. It's a little darker, it's a little, well, darker in color grading too, I should say. Uh, I think it's just fun just seeing, um, well, I want to stick to the second one. The second one, uh, going off of what I said for the first one, it keeps that absurdity that you see in the first one, but I will say it's a little worse because it just is kind of like Fast and Furious where there's some movies where like they establish that it's absurd, but it has rules. Then we get to the sequels, and then some of those rules are broken. I feel like there's, even though this is kind of a fantasy film, it goes a little too far in some places. But the second half of the film is really entertaining. There is this great hour-long venture between uh, the main cast, the pirates, and then the, uh, I guess, a kraken trying to take him down. That was really fun. I really like the chemistry between uh, Johnny Depp and Orlando Bloom. I, I really like them together. Overall, I would give it a watch, but it's not my, it's not as good as the first one. I still haven't watched three or four or five. I'm going to be watching them soon. I can't wait to watch those. In fact, I have the Blu-ray for uh, this movie and the first one, and on both, they play the trailer for Pirates 3. And, like, I think the same one they did for when it came out in theaters. That's a really good trailer, and it's getting me excited to watch that movie. So, if anything, I'm excited to see 3 at this point. And the way they end 2, it's kind of like a cliffhanger. And they said, oh, wow, they're sending out 3. I can't wait to see that one. Overall, I'd say I recommend it. But don't go in with high expectations when compared to the first one. Watch it. Although, the theme park ride's better. <laughs> I'll say that. Yes, uh, okay. indeed. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, do you want to talk about something you watched? Let's see. Ooh, I watched Luca finally on Disney Plus. What you I think? finally, finally got a chance to watch it on my own. What'd I I loved it. It was so cute. Oh, um, very that? wholesome. Yeah, I watched that. Loved it. I watched that at some point. I liked it. I don't think I loved it as much as you. Why do you love it? I don't know. Um, I guess like, hmm. I don't know. I, I've only seen it. I've only seen it once. Yeah. Okay. Uh. So, I don't know. I just. Is it like the chemistry between the two leads or something? Yeah, it was definitely the chemistry between Alberto and and Luca. Definitely, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And I think their character development really, really showed in in the film. Yeah. That's I did like the chemistry between them, but I feel like that movie, it sort of solves its problems way too early by the end of it. It's kind of rushed. That's just the way I look at mm. it. Plus, I feel like Luca, I mean, I'm on a, del- there's a seesaw in my head when it comes to this. Luca as a character, because we don't know much about him before he goes Nor, on his adventure. But I, if you, personally, I think we don't know much about Alberto. Like, we don't, I mean, we kind of know the deal with, like, you know, his dad and whatnot. And, yeah. But we don't r- truly know what happened between him and his dad. Yeah. Like, all we know is that, you know, they got separated. He's a sea monster like Luca, right? Yes. So... I want to know more, more about Al- Alberto, like personally, because I think we I, I, we get the idea about about Luca. Do you know? You think he'll get a Disney Plus series at some point? Hmm. Maybe I don't know. We'll see what Disney does there. They always come up with something. Yeah. They hold on to it forever. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I like. Again, I like Luca. Honestly, it's my least favorite Pixar movie, though. But and then again, I heard this from a professor I had for screenwriting in college. Even bad Pixar is better than most movies. I'd have I'd have to concur on this statement. So, Luca is it's fine. I just feel like it's more like a mediocre like not okay, not mediocre like a good DreamWorks movie, but not a good Pixar movie. If that makes any mm. sense. That's the way I look at it. That's just me. Everyone has their own opinions. Yeah. Okay. Agree to disagree. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let's see. I want to talk about something that I watched. Uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Okay, so I've already watched this a number of times in my life. But they just came out with the 4K Blu-ray for it. I'm not going to talk too much about the movie itself. Although, for those of you who have not seen it, it is amazing. I... I love it. I think it is one of the best films of the past decade. And they just celebrated their delayed 10th anniversary this year by putting the film in Dolby Cinema and they gave it another theatrical run. But they also came out with a 4K Blu-ray for it. And when it comes to uh, the 4K Blu-ray, it's crystal clear. There was like a sequence that uh, these the Kantianagi twins... Not really. Have you seen Scott Pilgrim? Never. Okay, well, there's a, there's a sequence where... Uh, one of the exits that Scott and the band is fighting there is the Kantianagi twins, and there's these dragons that come out uh, from the... <laughs> I can't even explain it. From, I guess, a... I don't know what you would call it. Thinking of a jingy. And, and mm-hmm. they're just facing the band and breathing fire on them. It looked incredibly realistic from my television. I, I loved it. But uh, what I also wanted to talk about is that on the Blu-ray... I watched all the way to the end credits, and then it stopped. And Universal, I guess, does this thing where they have bonus features that come up right after uh, the uh, movie ends. Like you don't, like you know, in some movies they put you towards a screen and they say, "Oh, you want to watch the bonus features?" And you're like, "Sure." You know, just turn to the on right here. Oh, they go right to it. And oh, this is on the DVD. Uh, it's, yeah, it's on the 4K disc. Oh, interesting. Uh, yes. Well, they had. One where they showed all the deleted scenes, and the last one they showed was the alternate ending. And I am so glad they did not go with that one. I'll tell you, 
Do you care if I, mean, I do not care about spoilers, but if you want to warn people, I guess if they haven't seen yeah. Scott Pilgrim versus the World. How old is this movie? Uh it came out in 2010, so Yeah, 10 years old pretty much. Yeah, so 11 years. All right. Old. Let me just say right now, if you're not seen Scott Pilgrim, watch it. It's on Netflix, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, really? Oh, I okay. I think it is. Let me double check. I want to fact check that just for Okay. <laughs> if it's on Netflix, I'm probably going to watch it. Yeah, Scott Pilgrim uh, versus the world. I have never read the source material or played the video game, so I can't say much about that. But, yeah, it's on Netflix. Okay. Yeah, I recommend it. All right. Yeah, now but, I got something to watch for next week. Yeah, well, here's the thing. The ending of that movie, uh, so the movie begins with Scott dating a high schooler because, uh, well, and I believe he's, 22 24 or something oh god <laughs> yeah uh mm. yeah so questionable yeah it's questionable all right there's a whole thing about it oh oh boy yeah uh, so everyone in the movie knows it's uh taboo uh, and uh by the end of it there's this other <laughs> other girl uh that he's dating and he kind of i guess uh tallies with her at, at some point and then that's kind of like the end of the movie but the alternate ending has him with the high schooler. Oh. Uh, which. <laughs> okay. It's a, like a happy ending, but like, no. But that's wrong. How yeah. old is this high schooler? I think like 17. Ooh. Ooh. Right, right, right below the legal limit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. Sorry. Yep. yep. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Good thing I'm. Good thing you warned me about this. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's just, like, I watched that, it's like, if they went with that ending, this movie would be so much worse. Yeah, I agree. Like, that movie, sounds That sounds like something very controversial. controversial. <laughs> At the same time, uh, I, yeah. Like, if they went with that ending. I would have, I don't know what I would have thought. I would have been an interesting controversy for people to talk about, but no. I, I'm, I'm glad they went with the ending they did. Uh, so thankful and I do recommend the movie it's freaking awesome if you haven't watched it but I want to go back to what else uh, is, there, is there anything you not listed off the top yet oh you do want to uh, talk about monsters? monsters at work we've both seen it actually I've not oh you haven't oh okay so okay so basic synopsis for this show um, this is a direct sequel to both Monsters Inc and Monsters Uni- University um, it will reference both both uh, films. Um, and this is about a scarer. I forget the name already. Please, please don't yell at me. Um, this is this is about a, a scarer who wants to work at Monsters, Inc. to be a scarer. And he graduated Monsters uh, University to be a scarer. Turns out um, he came at the wrong time because as soon as he gets the letter to, you know, work at Monsters, Inc. to be a scarer. He's informed that Monsters Incorporated, I guess, spoiler alert for the end of Monsters, Inc. Uh, Monsters, Inc. doesn't scare people anymore. They're, com- they're funny now. They make, pe- they make children laugh now. And uh, that's the premise of the whole show. Oh, yeah, and uh, Mike and Sully are basically, C- Mike and Sully are basically CEO of Monsters, Inc. now. So Makes sense. That 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 plot point was actually established in Kingdom Hearts three. Fun fact, because because <laughs> it's allegedly canon to the Monsters Inc. Uh, universe. Because um, like Mike and Sully mentioned that that Sully and is like CEO to like Sora and yeah, that's 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 a really random like thing to point out, but it's true that they they first mentioned that in a video game that not everyone has played. <laughs> so, <laughs> as, like, like I, I recommend just watching the cutscenes from that if, if you're actually really interested because it does give some insight, but not too much. Um, so, yeah. And I, you've seen Monsters, Inc., right? I have. Just, just I've, Monsters seen the, Inc. I've seen the first one. I've not seen the sequel. Okay. I do or have... Or prequel, so whatever it is. Know. The prequel, it the Monsters University is a prequel. 
um, takes place obviously before the first one. Um, so I recommend, I, I would recommend watching, um, Monsters University, but I don't like, I've only seen the first episode. So I would say watch the, watch Monsters Inc. And then watch Monsters at Work. And if you want more backstory on like, you know, Mike and Sully, then Monsters University. But yeah. Yeah. I, I have wanted to watch Monsters University, but I just not find the time to do it. I want to do it at some point. I believe that's on Disney Plus. Yeah, all the Pixar um, movies I believe are okay. on there. Okay, I I did own the Blu-ray before Disney Plus was a thing, so I did watch it when it first came out. Yeah, I was gonna watch it in theaters, but I skipped it. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was I? Yeah. And I, and as of right now, as we're recording this, there are two episodes. I've only seen the one episode because I I didn't have time before coming in to record today so right after we're done recording i'm going to watch the second episode and see what i and see if my opinions change but i'm so far liking it a lot of new characters a lot of familiar characters from both monsters incorporated and monsters university at least in the first episode um so yeah it's good i'm glad i liked it Mm-hmm. I'll have to check it out as well. Maybe. Lots of also a lot of returning voice actors like Billy Crystal as Mike, John Goodman and Sully, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think I have anything else that I've watched. Uh, I recommend it so yeah. far. Yeah. Again, yeah. I've only seen the first episode, so I'm liking it so far. So if right. you if if you're Monsters Inc. Cor- if you're a Monsters Inc. fan, go watch it. Yeah. Yeah, go check it out, guys. Yeah, first have- two episodes are on Disney Plus. I don't have anything else I watched. Is there anything else you watched? Um, that is it for my watch list okay. for this week. Okay. Let's move on to local news. Now, local news, we did this last week too. So basically, we're just for the record, this is being shot in Melrose, Massachusetts, right around the Eastern Mass area. So we're going to be talking about some news that is sort of close to home. Uh, New England area, yes. Yeah, New England area, <laughs> essentially. So last week, we talked about a new upcoming movie from Apple uh, starring Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds. It just started shooting. Ooh. And the uh, I this is one part where I actually wish we had cameras shooting this because mm-hmm. the, there's a photo that's <laughs> kind of too good for words. Uh, it's, uh, Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell, they all look like they're going to lock lips. Oh, goodness. Yeah. I mean, it's 2021, so. I mean, I don't know. It's just like the way, <laughs> I mean, seeing their faces doing it, too, is actually kind of goofy. It's just like, why are it we It says, doing? the picture on the, it's, if you look at the text, it says not Sony yeah, on the bottom. That's funny. That's funny. That is funny. Yeah. Uh, it's on Facebook, by the way. There's uh, it's it is on Facebook. Yeah, yes. the one I shared is on it's Facebook. On, yeah, day one. It's, it's on Ryan Reynolds' Facebook. If you guys are curious. Yeah. Uh, so this is from Ryan Reynolds' Facebook. It says, "Day one shooting with one of my comedy idols, Will Ferrell. You barely noticed that this was an Apple movie. Also, iOS 4, 14.6 will begin installing in seven seconds. So I'm looking at the image." Yeah, uh, they seem to be in a home with a Christmas tree in the background. Mm-hmm. He, uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds has some AirPods in for some reason. Oh yeah, some reason. I I literally don't know. I'm just looking at the picture. Uh, Apple. <laughs> I uh, think, I wonder if that's uh, why. Hmm. Uh, maybe they Is couldn't it... get a deal with Skull Candy or something. Or maybe I I don't have you seen any of those Sony movies where they every other product is from Sony. Yes. Yeah. Like Into I mean, the Spider Verse is a great example. Yeah, Amazing Spider Man Two is another yes. one. Yes. Yes. Yeah, like Cinema Sins, uh, they had a bonus round where they counted every single Sony product and product in the movie. <laughs> yes. Or Sony phone, Sony yes. television, Sony monitors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you bring up a good point with Spider Verse too. That's uh, PlayStation. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. Like, yeah. Oh, wow, that's it for local news. Actually, no, no the, there's, there's, one there's more. another thing. There's one more. I was uh, looking at the Facebook. I'm like, wait a minute, that's it? Yeah, I started from the bottom because I figured it would be uh, continued from last week. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yes. So Spirited begin shooting. Spirited, otherwise known as A Christmas Carol. Right, we talked about that last week. Yep. So, Will Ferrell is probably the Scrooge. 
Wait, so Will Ferrell is shooting two movies at once locally? What's the other one? I thought I thought he was also in Bull Moose. No, Bull Moose is not a uh, that's not a movie. That's a store. Oh, I'm stupid. Never uh, mind. Yeah. And Never st- mind. And going the, off the, a segue, the... Bull Moose uh, is a record, physical media, and movie slash TV slash music merchandise store in Salem, New Hampshire. There's other locations too, but this is the one we're going to be talking about. And it's just reopened their doors to the public, and I am, I'm happy because this is, uh, well, well, personally, I shop there all the time. Uh, well, since last year, it was, it's become one of my main uh, places to buy physical media because a lot of the other stores, uh, not counting you know, the department stores like Walmart or Target, have been getting rid of their physical media slate. Uh, FYE has been revamping over the years where they've gotten rid of their uh, movies. Uh, there's still some that have a ton, but there's new stores that have new uh, stuff that's more related to Funkos and stuff like that, kind of like a Spencer's. Newbury Comics, like every other location I go to, including the one at Square on Mall, is they don't have any movies anymore. They're all gone. They still have music, but the movies are gone. At Bull Moose, it's basically, there's like eight, ten different sections of one format that you can possibly find. One, like ten sections of Blu-ray, 10 to 20 sections of DVDs. There's like one or two sections of 3D movies. They have like a whole line of 4Ks. It's insanity. Like you wouldn't find any other place like this, uh, at least in the area. And they sell records too and that sort of stuff. But they closed their doors because uh, there was a whole thing. There was a beef between the, the employees and the management. I want to get this up real quick. Yeah, if, in fact, if you look at Google... It still says they're temporarily closed. That is not correct. They're now open from Monday to Saturday. Uh, for, uh, this is from, I heard this over one of the employees talking on the phone. They're open from 12, one, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. And they're closed on Sundays. So they changed their hours. They're probably going to, this is, these are temporary. And basically, this store, uh, let me. Yeah, this is a story that comes from Main Biz. This is from a few weeks ago. Okay, so let me read this from Main Biz. This is from three, three weeks ago. The store just opened like less than a week ago or so. So let's just go from here. All 23 employees of Bone Moose in Salem, New Hampshire, who are both abruptly fired in a dispute with management over use of face masks, have returned to work at, at her department based music and music, based music and entertainment center, issued a public apology. Uh, they, you know, employees wanted to wear a mask because there's some that weren't vaccinated and some who had, uh, I guess, high risk people in their life. And uh, one of the things I will remind you, if you are going to go to Bull Moose in Salem, New Hampshire, they still require masks. So if you go, bring one or they will provide one for you for free. Just public service announcement. Founder and President Brett Wickard are also company, uh, also offered company wide raises by June 2022. The clash stemmed from a decision to drop mask requirements for shoppers at the Salem store and prohibiting staff from asking whether customers have been vaccinated, according to media reports. Bo Moose employs 175 people in a total of three locations in New Hampshire and eight in Maine, a store in Portland closed last fall. Uh, in the company's Facebook page on Friday, Wickard apologized for what he called a humbling experience. After listening to employees over the past few weeks and changing what needed to be changed, the company offered to take back all those who have been let go with back pay. Okay. I don't know. There's, yeah, basically there's this long extended apology. In fact, when this whole thing started, there was a whole thing. Even I was even pissed. They said that this was te- definitely not uh, due to uh, the em- what the empl- employees were com- complaining about. And everybody was onto it. There's this whole thing on Facebook. It's ridiculous. Wow. Yeah. I almost said I'm never shopping there again. But uh, they kind of righted the wrong to a degree, and they still let everybody have their job back. So I'm I'm going to give them this one. I mean, if they do it again, I'm probably going to – we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm going to show you the thing that they said on May 22nd when this whole thing went down. We are sad to announce that we have temporarily closed our Salem store. 
We are not able to share the reasons behind our decisions regarding the Salem store, as it is important to us to protect the confidentiality of our former employees. We can, however, say we are confident this decision was in the best interest of our customers, employees, and business as a whole. We can also say empathetically, this decision had absolutely nothing to do with masks or face coverings for employees or customers. Mm. Sure, it That's, is. That is very uh, suspicious. The decision in itself is heartbreaking, <laughs> but we stand by it as the correct course of action. <laughs> Good quote. Uh, the, to move the business forward for the community. We apologize to the greater Salem community for t closing temporarily and will reopen this store as soon as we can with as many people as we can. We sincerely hope that you remain our customers. Uh, mm. Yeah, mm. The I'm not even going to go into the comments section, but oh let, boy. Me, let me just say, oh boy. let me just say. How many, how, what's the like reaction ratio That's on exactly Facebook? what I was about to bring okay. up. Okay, all right, all right, well, I'm curious. Okay, so uh, thousands of reactions. 817 or angry. <laughs> 230 likes. 159 sad faces. 49 laughs. Uh, 34 wows. Uh, 30 cares. And 21 hearts. Oh my God. This is insane. Oh my God. That's insane. That's so insane. <laughs> it's. You can't make this stuff up. No, you cannot. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm happy that I did run by there a couple times in the past couple of weeks because I got some things. And there was like one thing I could only get there. I got the two albums for Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. I got the soundtracks on CD now. Nice. I'm going nice. to play one of them on the way to Black Widow. Nice. Oh, yep. my God. Yep. I I don't know like I'm still torn if I want to watch it on Disney Plus or if I want to watch it in theaters. Well, I'm glad to see you back, but do better. Let's just say that. All right, so let's dive into our main topics today. These are topics selected in advance, all related to film and entertainment. Yep. And Millie, do you want to go first? Or do you want me to go yes, first? Yes, I'll go first. Okay. okay. So this isn't really news, film news, but this is like really big. Because this is Spider-Man Far From Home we're talking about. No Way Home? No Way Home. Not Far From Home. No Way Home. So many homes in all the Spider-Man MCU titles, it's, it's not even funny. Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, so we haven't gotten any information regarding a possible trailer dropping. And then pretty recently, uh, Marvel.com decides to reveal some Spider-Man No Way Home merch. And uh, it's very interesting because um, if you go on the marvel.com website, let me pull that up. Feel free to look at the website as well, uh, Jack. So I actually get a look at the, the figures. But so we get um, a black Spider-Man suit with like gold like outlines. A Spider-Man suit that looks similar to the Infinity War suit uh, with, like, the yeah. arms and stuff. Iron, um, I, Iron Spider. Iron Spider. Um, there is a Spider-Man Funko Pop that looks like that suit came from Doctor Strange. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure the other ones are from, like, the previous movies because if you uh, take a look at all 46 pictures, there are uh, some... Oh yeah, there's there's a Doctor Strange uh, Funko Pop that hasn't been seen in the MCU yet. It's it's he's literally wearing modern clothes with the cloak. He has a shovel in hand and he's like wearing what's similar to what he wore before he put on the Sorcerer Supreme outfit in the first Doctor Strange. Very very interesting. I wonder what that when he's going to wear that in the movie. Um, oh yeah, there's a J. Jonah Jameson figure in here that's, that's in this, um, gallery. There's also MJ, um, Ned. I'm pretty sure they haven't been Funko Pops before. I could be wrong though. Uh, let's see here. Spider-Man, 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 Spider-Man. J. Jonah Jameson, there we go. J. Jonah Jameson is in there. Um, don't know if this is like him being represented from the first, the 
latest one from two years ago, or if he's going to show up again in No Way Home, we'll see. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We got a Spider-Man Nerf Blaster Web Bolt. Interesting. Uh, let's see here. Got the oh yeah, we also have the Lego. Uh, the Lego sets, I think, are the most interesting because I think they show a little bit. Although not every MC Lego set is accurate to the film, so please take the Lego set, I guess, with a grain of salt because, you know, yeah. not everything represented in there is accurate. Yeah, even not even the trailers um, are even accurate to the films, too. Exactly. They're always, like, heavily edited to, put like, put, like obviously avoid, like, leaks and stuff like that. Yeah, there's sets, like... It, it says on the box, inspired by Marvel Studios, Spider-Man Far From Home. Far um, From Home? Inspired. I'm like, that that is... Wait, and, far and From Home or yes, No Way Home? Yes. No, no, no. On the box, it's labeled, if you look at the gallery, there's a there's a Lego set. It there's It's it's advertised as Spider-Man No Way Home, but there's a little, like, quote-unquote sticker on the, like, top right. It says... Inspired by Marvel Studios, Spider-Man, No Way Home. Oh. Not No Way Home, Far From Home. What does that mean? Like, they could have just put Spider-Man uh, Far From Home on the box and just call it a day, but no. They just decided to confuse us even more. Yeah. Uh. And, and then there's this set, which is actually from No Way Home, which is apparently the Sanctum... Uh, uh, workshop that's that's what it says on the box so I'm just gonna go by that information um, uh, the set includes Spider-Man uh, Doctor Strange MJ and Ned and a lot of stuff is happening in that so let very know, interesting let me know when they come out with the Funkos where uh, Tom and Zendaya are making out <laughs> oh, oh gosh um, yes uh, if the, the, for those who don't know uh, Tom Holland and, and Zendaya were caught by paparazzi, uh, you know, but potentially on a date. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Af after years of denying that they were actually dating <laughs> during during the press interviews. Okay, so, so this next Lego set that I really want to point out is that, so there is this black, there's the black Spider-Man suit I mentioned again that... If I remember correctly, I don't think has ever been in Spider-Man uh, Homecoming. It has not. not no. And, and, the t and the box is called Spider-Man's Drone Duel with a black-suited Spider-Man and Vulture. Oh, boy. And once again, it says inspired by Marvel Studios' Spider-Man Homecoming. So are these like... These have to be from these, other these stuff. These have to be. No. To, no, I don't think it's in this There's movie no way. at all. I don't think it's in this movie at all. I think it's just like just promoting our stuff. You think stuff. this is just like not straight from the films just for the Lego set? You think that's what this is? Well, I don't even know if they came out with Lego for the other movies yet, did they? Um, They have, okay. I believe. I could be wrong. I know yeah. they've, they, they've done merchandise for these other movies. I mean, they have. And the I, box is different. Yeah, I don't know if they changed that or not. I'm wondering if this is like... Mm, this is just me speculating, but, like, what if this is, like, a scene from the movie where it's, like, the multiverse and, like, you know, we're seeing Vulture and Mysterio again because they're both in the sets that's labeled Spider-Man No Way Home. Again, I could be wrong, but clearly the black-suited Spider-Man has never been in Homecoming, so this has to be a scene from No Way Home. Yeah. That's just, this is just me rambling. Yeah. It's on the marvel.com website, so this isn't any, this isn't a leak. Uh, just, just, just putting that out there. This isn't a leak. This is, this is on an official Marvel website, so. Yeah. I'll move on to something. So, I just want to say, what we do here on uh, Cineology, we often talk about a lot of people making movies. And one of the things that I think some people will, to say about us or other people in general is that maybe we're lazy because we don't make films. You're wrong. Chris Stuckman, one of the most popular movie-related YouTubers perhaps of all time, 
is attached to an upcoming movie. Uh, there's a movie coming out from uh, him and a few other people uh, called Shelby Oaks. It's an upcoming horror project. And he just announced that he will be the director. He will be writing it. It's, it's from Deadline. Uh, Paper Street Pictures, The Pale Door, has set YouTuber Chris Stuckman to write and direct the mystery horror movie Shelby Oaks about a group of missing paranormal investigators. This project will chart the story of a fictional mid 2000s U.S. paranormal investigative team called the Paranormal Paranoids. Multiple found footage videos have surfaced online in recent months that prompted horror and ARG, or alternate reality game, fans to speculate about the first veracity of the case and the whereabouts of the investigators. One video uploaded last week appeared to show the abduction of one of the group known as Riley. Okay. I, yeah, so production will begin in late 2021 in Ohio, which is actually where Stuckman lives. Mm -hmm. So it's not far from home. <laughs> far from home. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, so... We just talked about that, so... Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yes. Yeah. So I'm going to read some quotes here. Uh, okay. I have been looking for the right project to partner with Chris on for a while, explained Paper Street CEO Kuntz. Uh, I don't know his full name. Uh, Aaron B. Kuntz, that's his name. And when I fell down the rabbit hole, this scary little story quickly emerging in right in Chris's backyard of Ohio with an intriguing and quickly growing YouTube element baked in, I knew we had to act fast in the perfect vehicle to launch Chris as a feature filmmaker. And yeah, he... He has done some short films over the years recently. There's one called Notes from Melanie. It's really good. I recommend everyone here should check it out. Please, please check it out. It's really good. I, I knew we had to act fast in the perfect vehicle to launch Chris as a feature filmmaker. The videos and mystery are scary enough, but the ideas we have for where this can go are truly frightening. Stuckman added, It's been a lifelong dream of mine to finally get a film off the ground, and when Aaron and I began discussing the potential of this story, we immediately jumped at it. There's a reason so many of my fellow YouTubers are talking about this. Shelby Oaks is going to be something fresh, yet deeply unnerving. So I guess it's kind of like a element of fact and fiction to a degree. And I think it's a story that's still ongoing. I'm very excited. I've been watching Stuckman for years. So to see him mm -hmm. finally attached to a project like this. that That's really exciting. I am so happy for yeah. him. Like, there's so many people that in the industry is like, okay, I'm happy for him. Thank you for this project. No, I feel like I've been attached to Chris for so many years. Mm-hmm. I'm so happy. Yeah, I, like, I feel like I think you. I think you introduced me to Chris Stuckman, the I, YouTuber. Maybe I did. I, I could have. I don't know. Um, I mean, I first saw him on Doug Walker's like channel. Yeah, he before yeah, you the, know the Star War, the Rogue One video that he did with him. I think it. I think it was the Force Awakens one he did with him. No, that was a cinema snob. Was he not? Oh, must have been Rogue One. It was Rogue One. That was the first one yeah, he did. Yeah, that was like t around 2016, 2017, yep. I think, when that review came out. Yep. It was a good video, by mm -hmm. the way. Yep. And I got hooked in. I got hooked since and from watching some of his stuff. Not all of his stuff, but I'm familiar with his, with his work on YouTube. Yes. Yeah. Very happy for Suckman. If you're listening to this, I'm rooting for you and can't wait to see the film. Uh, and by the way, speaking of YouTubers who have become filmmakers, I do want to add Robert Byer Burnett is attached to Chango Shal Shalom. Yeah, I pronounced that right. Which is going to be in theaters this August. I'm not going to talk too much about this, but I will say he, for those of you who don't know Robert Meyer Burnett, he has his own YouTube channel as well. He uh, has, his, has also on the John Campia show. And let's see what... We have here, sweeping up at top film festivals worldwide, Tango Shalom is directed by Gabriel Bologna and produced, I hope I pronounced that name right, and produced by Jose and Claudio Leniando of uh, Covincia, uh, Covincia Forever Films, co-written by Jose Leniando and Emmy and Academy Award nominated Joseph Bologna. Let's see, he's done My Favorite Year, Blaming on Rio, Big Daddy, Lovers and Other Strangers, produced by Joel Zwick from my Big Factory Wedding, Robert Meyer Burnett, Ancient Cody Banks franchise, CC Bologna, and Jordi Caballero. So, oh, wow. This is cool. This is like a Jewish thing. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, wait, Shalom is a Jewish uh, word. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just read the synopsis. It makes sense now. Yeah. I'll read the synopsis. When a female tango dancer asks a rabbi to enter a mm -hmm. dance competition, there's one big problem. 
Due to its orthodox beliefs, he's not allowed to touch her. Ooh. Desperately in need of splitting the prize money to save his Hebrew school from bankruptcy, they develop a plan to enter the competition without sacrificing his faith. The bonds of family and community are tested one dazzling dance step at a time in this lighthearted fable. Hmm. It sounds like a good film. I this can't... is interesting. I'd watch that. It's going to be in theaters this August, and it's going to be on uh, VOD On Demand this October, I believe. Does it say where? Uh, where, as in... Like what streaming platforms? I think it's going to be like everywhere. Like, you know how you can rent it? Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's probably going to be something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably like on cable or Amazon or yeah, Hulu. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's, I don't know. There's Good to a, know it's going to be in theaters, too. Um, sorry, what? Good to know it's going to be in theaters, too. Yeah. I'm not sure how many, maybe like maybe. Maybe a, a few thousand or hundred. Yeah. Landmark at the very least will probably get it. Maybe some AMC as well. But we'll see. I'm, we'll I, see. I'm very excited. It sounds like it's going to be a good movie. Uh, and this goes to show. Yeah. Some YouTubers actually can make movies. And some critics can make movies. And some can't. <laughs> cough, cough, smosh. Oh, cough, I'm, cough, Fred. <laughs> I have not. Yeah, okay. I've seen Fred. I've not seen the other one. Yeah. Don't, don't bother watching smosh, even though Alex Winter from uh, Bill and Ted is in that. Don't, don't, okay. don't watch that. Okay. I've seen Smosh's stuff. I've not seen the movie. Yeah, Smosh. Oh, and Shane Dawson made a movie a while back. Um, not good. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Yep. I was going to say, I literally had a thought that was just left my I'm head. I'm sorry. I, I just thought of like bad YouTuber movies because, yeah. yeah I that's... mean, and plus, goes to show, you said you're studying to be an actress, right? Mm hmm. Okay. See? Yeah. We're in the industry. You can see people. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Now you understand. We can make movies. I know bad acting when I see them. <laughs> <laughs> Trust her. Okay. So, do you want to talk about something? Sure. Let's see here. I guess I'll just go down my list. So, is Hugh Jackman returning to the MCU? I have not read this article. Okay. So I can't say much about it. <laughs> so, basically, TLDR, um, Hugh Jackman posted on his Instagram story of him and Kevin Feige together on his Instagram story a couple days ago, and uh, fans have been going wild speculating, is Hugh Jackman going to be in the MCU? Is, is Wolverine coming back? Is old man Logan going to be canon to the MCU? Because, you know, Hugh Jackman's, like, you know, getting old and doesn't want to do the character anymore. So... I don't think he's going to be in it. I think he's just I, done. I don't think he's going to be in it. Um, I think he's done with the workouts. I feel like maybe uh, him and Kevin Feige had a meeting, not because he's returning as Wolverine, maybe because he's, he wants to talk about the character of, of Wolverine. Maybe where'd he go from here? And no, like the character in general, because maybe like um, Kevin Feige doesn't know a lot about Wolverine as a character and Hugh Jackman does because he has been playing him since like 2000 the early 2000s I do not remember when the first X-Men came out but I think maybe like maybe I don't know maybe Hugh Jackman is involved with a new, the casting of a newer potential Wolverine if they do end up casting a new Wolverine for this one way to pass the torch I guess mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think he'll be in it uh, yeah I just think he's down the role. I think he's just moving on to other things. Yeah. That's so my statement, I, I feel like maybe that's the case. I could be 110% wrong about this and Hugh Jackman may end up coming I, back. Like, I think they did something similar to this with Deadpool 2. Or I, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, Where like we weren't sure if Ryan Reynolds would come back as Deadpool after Disney bought Fox. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That sort of thing. But then it turns out he's coming back for Deadpool 3, which is which is fun. I Yay. love that. Can't wait for Deadpool 3. Anyway, that's that's the basic story. Um Yeah. That's 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 basically the information. Okay. Now, let's talk about quite possibly my most anticipated movie ever. Cocaine Bear. <laughs> this is an awesome story. Have you All ever heard right. of the story of King Cocaine Bear? I have never heard of Cocaine Bear. Okay. This is All incredible. Right. Okay, love first off, the movie's being directed by Elizabeth Banks, who Ooh. I love. Nice. I love her. Nice. 
Uh, I mean, she directed the recent Charlie's Angels movie, which I almost, uh-huh. I'll be honest, that sucked. But mm-hmm. I love Elizabeth Banks as an actress. She's hosting Rest Your Lock, which I think is a fantastic. <gasps> oh my God, wait. Carrie Russell and Alden, and Alden, who who were both in, well, uh, yeah. we're, we're both in Star Wars, yeah, uh, two different Star, Star Wars, Wars movies. movies. Yes. I'm recognizing these these actors. Yeah. All right. Ray All Liotta right. from the iconic classic B movie <laughs> and other stuff. Oh my God, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like every week we're going to be making a B movie joke <laughs> or a B movie it, like it's that reference. Good. It's that good. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. And also, it's Jesse Tyler Ferguson from Modern Family <laughs> oh as well. Oh, my gosh. And uh, O'Shea Jackson as well. Uh, production is set to begin August 23rd in Ireland. Uh, yeah, so basically, this whole thing was about, yeah, just new cast members joining. Carrie Russell, O'Shea Jackson, Ray Liotta, Alden Ironreich, and Jesse Tyler Ferguson. That's mm-hmm. the main story. Yep. Yeah. Production is set to begin August 23rd in Ireland. Jimmy Warden wrote the script that's described as a character-driven thriller inspired by true events that took place in Kentucky in 1985. Additional mm. information is being kept under wraps. Mm. Phil Lord, Chris Miller. Ooh. I'm so excited Love now. that. And oh, the, my God. And Adita Sood are producing for Lord Miller. Uh, Brian Duffield is also producing as well as Banks as, and Max Handelman who produced under the Brownstone Productions banner. Actually, yeah, I think that's also the production company behind the new Press Your Luck as well. Alden uh, Aaron Reich is once again working with Phil Lord and Chris Miller. Let's 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 see how long that lasts. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, for context, uh, Alden Aaron Reich starred in Solo, and before... Um, who who was who was the next director after Phil Ron Lord? Howard? Ron Howard. So before Ron Howard stepped in to direct uh, Solo, uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller were directing Solo bef- before they stepped down mm-hmm. due to creative differences. So yeah, um, that's 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 my fun fact there. So yep. let's see how long this one lasts. Yeah, I, I'm excited. They got some good cast members. I mean, they did. And plus, yeah. I'm just excited to see what Elizabeth Banks can do. I'm just hoping it's better than the last movie she did. But the thing I wanted to bring up about this, do you want to hear about the story of Cocaine Bear? I don't want to digress too much, but um, if you want, this is an amazing I'm story. I'm very curious, actually. Uh, it's an awesome story. I don't want to go too much into it, but let me see. Cocaine Bear, Lux- Lexington, Kentucky. Okay, uh, <laughs> the this is from RoadsideAmerica.com. The Blue Bloods okay. of Kentucky want you to associate their state with the thoroughbred racehorses, or bourbon, or even Abraham Lincoln. They would rather not add Cocaine Bear to their roster of Kentucky immortals, but it's too late now. The bear has become an official state icon, thanks to Whit Hiller and Griffin Van Meter. Cocaine Bear was briefly famous in 1985 when it was found dead after eating roughly, get this, <laughs> what? $15 million. Wait $15 million. Or the coke from a duffel bag. Oh Drunk my from god! A jug smuggler's airplane. <laughs> oh my god! This sounds like a fan film of some sort. <laughs> this sounds like some amateur like student film. It sounds like it, but like, it's not. <laughs> it's not. This is a full length Hollywood feature film. Yes. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> the smuggler, Andrew Carter Thornton the second. Wait, smuggler, <laughs> yeah. Alden Ehrenreich, Han Solo. Uh huh. Connections. Was the wealthy son of an elite Kentucky horse breeding family, according to a display at Georgia Bureau of Investigation headquarters, famous for exhibiting the monkey from Mars, Thornton fell to his death when he bailed out of the airplane, hit his head on the tail of the aircraft, and didn't open his parachute until it was too late. Oh my god. I don't want to go too much into this. No, but... I think that's all I need to know about this film. I can't wait to see this thing. Oh my god. I didn't realize how crazy that that plot is. It's awesome. Oh my god! <laughs> I put out a tweet uh, about this casting notice, uh, or well, not a casting notice, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But I said uh, at some point, where was it? Oh, here it is. The movie of Ben the decade is going along smoothly. Wow! I cannot oh my god. wait for this. When is this coming out? Do did, did we have an, a, a release window let me go for to, this? Let me go with it doesn't the, say that in the article, so I'm just asking. Yeah, I'm trying to see if there actually is one. The production starts August 23rd. All so. right, so assuming 
they're starting right now. Maybe maybe 2022? I, yeah. Possibly. Possibly. I mean, yeah, it makes sense since, this I mean. It sounds like this could win Best Picture. <laughs> oh, my God. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised knowing yes. knowing how many movies are coming out within the next year or so. Oh, my God. I can't wait for this. Oh, my God. All right. Do you have anything you would like to say that could top this? Uh, let me see my news list here. Um, uh, let's see. I mean, Paddington 3 is, is, is going to film next year. Have you seen the other two Paddington films? No, I have not. Neither have I. Nice two of us. <laughs> good to know. Uh, I just wanted to add that. Cool. Uh, I'm... I've heard good things about the Paddington 1 and let me, 2. Let me actually look at the article from comicbook.com. Yes. I've heard good things um, about the first two films, but i so not seen them for some reason. So this is from comicbook.com. The world's most beloved bear is finally working on his long-awaited return. <laughs> Cocaine bear. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> Sincerest apologies to Yogi, but we're clearly talking about Paddington here. No, Sorry, cocaine bear. <laughs> After the first two live action Paddington films were met with critical acclaim and box office success, the marmalade loving bear is coming back for a third adventure with the project set to go into production in the first half of 2022. During a production at the Cannes Film Festival on Monday, Studio Canal announced that Paddington 3 was officially moving forward and that filming would begin in quarter two of 2022. Paul King, Simon Farnaby, and Mark Burton, all of whom worked on the first few Paddington films, will, will be writing the story for Paddington 3. Burton will also be writing the script with John Foster and James Lamont. At this time, a director for Paddington 3 has yet to be announced. King, King helmed the first two Paddington films, but there is some doubt about his, his return given his upcoming work on the, on the Willy Wonka prequel film for Warner Brothers. So, yeah, I, f I forgot that was happening. Me too. I can't wait for that, actually. Yep. Um, and there are... Let me skip a few paragraphs here. There are no casting announcements regarding Paddington, Paddington 3 just yet, but it would be easy to assume that Ben Winshaw will be returning to voice the, t the titular bear in the threequel. Yes. I will say, I, once again, I've not seen Paddington. I want to go back and watch the other two before this Same. one. I've heard nothing but praise for the, for the Same. other two. They sound like... Mm -hmm. They sound like... A uh, more adventurous Mr. Rogers, like in terms of vibe. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I don't know how else yeah. to describe it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who knows? I hope Paddington Three is good. I hope the crew does uh, has a good time making it. Mm -hmm. So can't wait. Yeah. Yeah. Looking um, forward to that. Yeah, it's definitely much more friendly than the last topic. <laughs> uh, the kids. Okay. Uh, but speaking of the end of the world, uh, oh, gosh. Greenland Two uh, is was. This had an idea for a sequel, and it was sold to X STX, which, by the way, they also uh, distributed the last film as well, for $75 million, which by itself is a pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. But I also found out the title for the sequel. I don't know if this was just revealed, but apparently it's going to be called Greenland Migration. It's a sequel to the 2020 disaster film starring Gerard Butler, which, by the way, I do recommend. It's on HBO if you want to watch it right now. Nice, nice. Yeah, uh, same with HBO Max. And the biggest deal yet at this year's Con Film Festival, STX shelled out $25 million to roll out the film in the U.S. and Canada and pay another $50 million for international territories. In line with XCS's distribution model, the sequel is being pre-sold to buyers in foreign markets to offset the massive $75 million price tag. Uh, the first film skipped theaters because of covid Mm -hmm. uh, de debuted on video on demand. Although I got to watch it for free because I got a uh, early access screening. Uh, but the company did not disclose rental sales, so it's unclear how many people watched Greenland at home. Outside of North America, Greenland played on the big screen in more than 26 countries and collected $52 million in the international box office. My question is, why are they making this? Because uh, mm. the first one ended in a way... I'm not going to spoil it because it came out last year. Uh, and there's probably some people who have not seen it. It ends in a way that it doesn't really warrant a sequel. I mean, I guess there's a way to mm. go from here, but mm -hmm. it's, that's just all I'm going to say. But okay. at, the same, yeah. at the same time, though, it's a really good movie. So if they could have the same, 
I guess, unpredictability that they kind of gave in the first one. Yep. We can have something watchable here. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, we'll, see how, we'll see how this does. Yeah. Um, yes. Chris Sparling is on board to write the script, and Butler, uh, Gerard Butler, is reprising his role alongside co-star Marina Bakarin of Deadpool and Homeland fame. And, yeah, so they'll be back together. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And that's pretty much all I have to say on it. I don't, I don't know if you have anything else you want to say in terms of news. Um, let's see here. Rogue One Squadron director script is being, it reveals script is being finished. Director being Patty Jenkins, by the, the way. The direct, yes. <laughs> I'm, again, reading this off of comicbook.com. So, yes, um, Patty Jenkins has revealed on... I believe a Hollywood Reporter interview uh, stating that, and I quote, it's it's going amazing, uh, Jenkins told the Hollywood Reporter. I had been on it for already for six months before I even announced it, so we're pretty deep into it. We're finishing a script, crewing up, and it's all going wonderful. I'm so excited about the story and excited that we're, that we're the next chapter of Star Wars. Which is a responsibility and such an opportunity, such an opportunity to really start some new things. It's really exciting in that way. So, yeah. I was excited to hear Patty doing a Star Wars movie when this was first announced. Mm-hmm. Seeing Wonder Woman 1984 kind of hindered that interest a little bit. At the same time, though, I have faith in her. Yeah, I mean, again. Th- to me, this is Star Wars, and I trust Patty Jenkins. And so far, like from the movies Disney has released, uh, movie-wise, I'm loving all of them, including the sequels. So again, this is just my opinion. I love all of the movies uh, Disney has come out, Star Wars-wise, and I am really excited for Rogue Squadron. Um, I'm curious what the plot's gonna be. I'm wondering when, what time period this will take place, whether it will be post Tross or if it's gonna be um, original trilogy era. We will find out um, more information later in the year. Um, once again, um, Rogue Squadron is set to hit theaters December 22nd, 2023. Mm-hmm. And this article also points out that Disney has secured dates for Star Wars films in both December of 2025 and December of 2027. So they're going to win that, you know, those two holiday seasons as yep. well. Yep, absolutely. I think the whole December calendar from these years on out are either Star Wars or Avatar. Or Marvel because yeah. of Spider-Man well, no this home, year. Yes. Yep. I mean, yep. Yeah. And then Sony will probably win that one. Yep. Technically, yeah, because it is Sony. Yeah. Um, Disney gets 25%. Uh, oh, yeah, and Spider-Verse came out in December, too, remember? Yeah, but that loss compared to Aquaman. Mm, yeah, yeah, true. And, yeah, I think even... I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, like, in general, like, Sony had a movie come out in December uh, yes. before. Yeah, with, okay, with, okay. With, um, with that, so... Yeah. Um, that is it article wise again i am super excited about this i'm i'm hoping me personally i'm hoping personally that this is like this this film takes place after the rise of skywalker because obviously we have no idea where the universe the star wars universe will go from there after you know yeah the rise of skywalker ends after palpatine like you know dies again and uh, the first order, the final order falls, I should say. So. Yeah. Final order until we need $3 billion. At Although the Rogue Squadron is a thing in the original trilogy because Rogue Squadron is the name of Luke's like X-Wing Squadron in uh, the original trilogy. So who uh, knows? Maybe if, if it does take place in the sequel trilogy, maybe some rogue, some like rookie pilot yeah. in the Resistance might just name after that squad. Name that squadron after Luke's original squadron. I think it was also a video game as well. It was a video game. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. It's not like it's Legends material, the video game, so they might take some stuff from that. Yeah. Okay. Let me... Uh, so, Venom 2 seems to be calling along well. I will just say I saw the first one. I hated it. Mm, uh, I yeah. flat out hated it. Yeah, I didn't like that so much, personally. Oh, you didn't like the movie? 
I didn't like it. Yeah. There's like one or two funny parts, but yeah. other than that, mm -hmm. there's not much else to say. Although the sequel looks good Yeah. to me. I, I It's a, such a little thing, but the, during the trailer, it, yeah. like the beginning when they're... <laughs> Like Tom Hardy's just like making when, breakfast. When he's making breakfast with Venom, and he's like the comedic relief now. Not he, not not that he's like killing people. Yeah. <laughs> and Venom in the trailer just gets along with the with the convenience store clerk. Just oh, you know, just well, well. Here's the thing that I love about it. It's just the way Venom just says, "Got some." It's like oh the way god, he said yeah. it is perfect. Yeah. Oh my god. Got some. Why do I like the sequel more than the original? I don't get it. Andy Serkis is directing it. That's true. I forgot. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. So Tom Hardy is the face of Sony's Venom franchise. This yep. comes to us from IndieWire. Mm -hmm. But he's more than just the star of the upcoming sequel, Venom Let There Be Carnage. As confirmed by screenwriter Kelly Marcel in an interview with Empire Magazine, Hardy is getting his, the first story by credit of his feature film career after spending months brainstorming the narrative for the sequel with Marcel. That's, Venom. that's good Tom Hardy has creative control. Yeah. Venom, Let There Be Carnage, reunites Hardy and Michelle Williams, along opposite franchise newcomer Woody Harrelson as the eponymous villain. Uh, this is new for him mm -hmm. to get credit, Marcel said. But it's not new for him to be this involved. He's absolutely 100% committed to everything that he does. He's married to Venom. He loves his character. He's very involved in what he thinks should happen. Uh, yeah, so basically, just sum it up, long story short, mm -hmm. uh, as Tom Hardy spent months uh, with, I guess, the writing crew uh, over, over FaceTime, uh, just some, spitting out ideas for the movie. And he did so much that essentially he gets a story by credits. Nice. Yeah. That's that's promising. Yeah. We spent months breaking the story together on space, no, on, on, on space time, FaceTime. Space time. <laughs> space time continuum. Yeah. Thanks, Apple. Yeah. So this is explains Marcel and Marty's process, riffing on ideas, seeing what worked, seeing what didn't. And I took everything we spoke about and hold up somewhere for three months quietly, knocking out a script. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I'm, I hope that it's better than the first one. Let's come on, please. Anything's better than that first movie. And it comes out, I think, October. I believe it's October. October of next year. No, no, this year. Actually. This year. This year, September twenty fourth. Oh wow, that's soon. Yeah, it opens that's up in theaters. Soon. Nice. Yeah. I didn't realize it was that soon. Yep. Uh, it's just in time for Halloween, kind of like last yep. year. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that made over $800 million. Lots of movies Marvel's coming out with this year. Wow. I didn't realize. Yep. Because we got Black Widow, Venom, Shang-Chi, Spider-Man. And Eternals. And Eternals. Mm -hmm. That's five. That's five. Yeah. Not even all. And not all of them are from Disney. Not all of them are from Disney. Yeah. Okay. Uh, speaking of Marvel, uh, so I we talked about Black Widow, uh, mm -hmm. but so the film the film opens both on Disney Plus tomorrow and well I don't know if it opens on Disney, Disney Plus. Disney Plus like premium access. So yeah, I don't know if it opens, you got to pay f to watch it. Basically, I don't know if it opens tomorrow on Disney Plus or Friday on Disney Plus, mm -hmm. but maybe like at midnight on Friday. I'm I'm assuming maybe like. Mm, Maybe like six, five, six, or seven o'clock our time tomorrow. Maybe. That's a good. Guess. Not sure. I, I I know some theaters again are showing the movie at five o'clock at at the at the least. Okay. So this is just me guessing. I have no idea when yeah, it's coming. Yeah, me out. neither. Like yeah, so logically, I, it might come out at three a.m. because um obviously for West Coast people it will still be like. It's gonna be midnight. It will. It'll be midnight for them in three three a.m. our time because yeah. that's how um yeah, the, that's how Loki and Bad Batch have that's, has been that's coming how all out. All the shows have been doing it actually. Yeah. Yeah, all the shows have been doing it. So, I'm if I had to if I had to place my best guess, it would probably be at three a.m. um on on Friday. Yeah. Well, so anyway, so uh, the ticket pre-sales according to Fandango. Uh, are so far for Black Widow the best of 2021, which wow. I'm kind of surprised, but not really. I mean, I know this is a big, big right. movie, 
Yeah. I figured F9 would have more pre-sales, even though I know this is probably going to have a bigger opening weekend. Yeah. I mean, so far, that doesn't surprise me. But then, like, once maybe the trailer comes out for Spider-Man and we're going to get, like, pre-ticket sales for that, I think that's going to be blown (sighs) out of the water. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Once that drops i think people if, are going to want to dro- go see that in the theater listen i'm i'm going to call it right now if it drops tomorrow we're definitely talking about it next week because oh my god i've been waiting for this trailer for like literal months everybody's been waiting for this yes. for a lifetime yes we should just dedicate a whole episode to just talking about spider-man oh, <laughs> just boy. just because it's we're because we're both big spider-man fans so yeah. we're, we're big webheads. yeah so yeah so as we told you over the weekend, this is from Deadline, Disney slash Marvel's Black Widow pre-sales were set to outstrip that of Universal's F9 at the same point in time before its opening weekend, and this morning, Fandango has reported that the Kate Shortland-directed movie is their best pre-seller so far in 2021. Black Widow advanced ticket sales are also besting that of pre-pandemic Marvel titles Spider-Man Homecoming. Holy cow. Uh, domestic opening box office $117 million, and Doctor Strange opening $85 million. That one doesn't surprise me. Mm-hmm. First weekend projections for Black Widow are between eighty to ninety million dollars. Disney is being safe with a seventy-five million dollar plus forecast. The Scarlett Johansson superhero movie is currently eighty-three percent certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, so most people like it. Let's see. I'm not going to read the rest of it, but. Uh, today, um, or this morning, I should say, uh, Disney Animation on Twitter uh, revealed the new, a new poster for a upcoming Disney animated film called Encanto, uh, yeah, which it? is which has been, I think it's been teased. I think there was a teaser trailer that uh, released a while back for this. I... Um, they revealed the poster for this film, the teaser poster, and according to the post, um, a new trailer is coming out for this movie tomorrow. That makes sense. It'll probably be attached to Black Widow. I'm looking at the poster. It does look very vibrant. It does. Oh, my gosh. And we don't know the plot details of this film. All I know that it's it's coming out, according to the poster, uh, November 2021, which is, th- which is n- not that far. Not that far, yeah. So it's probably in t- just in time for Thanksgiving. Yeah, for I'm gonna to I'm gonna guess this is coming out around Thanksgiving. Yeah, uh, Moana did it. Ralph, Ralph yep. two did it. Mm-hmm. Frozen, Frozen yeah, two did yeah. it. That makes sense. Lots and lots of like animals, like flowers, and, and there's like a door opening in the center, and there's like a candle. I wonder what this is. And the it says magical house, magical family, on uh, the poster. So I'm yeah. wondering what that's about. Yeah, me too. I'm very curious. This is a good little teaser poster. It's very colorful. It's nice to look at. We'll see what happens. Okay. All right. Yeah. Do you want? Do you have any other news? Millie, how many streaming services do you have? Let's see. Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, Disney Plus. Um. Technically, uh, what's that anime streaming service? Crunchyroll? Not Crunchyroll. Although it could be. Actually, no, yeah, it is Crunchyroll. So I have a lot. Probably five. Okay. Why? Well, one of the things I liked about having few stream, streaming services is that studios would use their movies to bring them over to other platforms. Now I can mm-hmm. just watch them there. Well, with Universal, they now have Peacock. Oh, yeah. I watched um, Eurovision on Peacock because it was free. Oh, uh, yeah. They, uh, they do have a free tier. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I, I do actually have Peacock on the on the free tier because, yeah. Yeah. So, basically, uh, Universal, all those films, I'm assuming this also includes Focus Films and their other sub-studios, they're mm-hmm. now going to go to Peacock after the theatrical release. They used to go to HBO. So, if you wanted to experience Cats the way it was meant to be experienced, go on HBO Max right now. But that probably won't be for long. Cats is a universal film. Yeah. yeah okay. So <laughs> Universal. I knew that. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. Uh, universal will move its pay one window for films for uh, from HBO to Peacock, the studio said Tuesday. 
The move is another sign of import the importance that media conglomerates are placing on bolstering their in-house streaming services as they, gauge as they engage in a fierce battle for subscribers. Both Peacock and Universal are owned by Comcast. Universal's films have been released on HBO since 2005. Now, Peacock will have access to Universal's most popular franchises, which include the Jurassic World and Fast and Furious films, as well as the, Dis the Despicable Me movies and spinoffs. New films will appear on a streaming service within four months of their theatrical debut. A new deal will kick off in 2022, but it is structured somewhat differently than past packs governing the traditional 18-month pay-one window. Universal Slate will go to Peacock as the pay-one partner for the initial four months of the period, as well as the final four months of the window. During the middle of 10 months, those films will be licensed to additional partners who will not have exclusive rights. Roughly two streamers or cable networks will have the rights to air Universal films during that period. Those partners are expected to be announced in the coming weeks. Under its past agreement with HBO, Universal is able to license certain Illumination titles on Netflix, which is why it's speaking with me, and Secret Life of Pets films routinely turn up on their subscription service. Okay. I... The, the studio hopes that by segmenting the release of its films across multiple platforms, it can refresh them across the streaming ecosystem to avoid oversaturation of their or the prospect that some of its film will seem stale. It gives the company an important sense of revenue, the rise in new streaming platforms such as Paramount Plus, HBO Max, Disney Plus, and yes, Peacock, has left new entrants scrambling to walk up high-end content. They're willing, to play, they're willing to pay top dollar for their rights as well. Sony, for instance, recently signed a one-pay pack with Netflix that sources said came with a re recording setting, no, recording setting price tag. I think they... Guys, please proofread your articles. Okay. <laughs> oh, gosh. It came with a recording setting price tag. That's what I'm reading right here. Or recording. I don't even know. Yeah, I'm not going to read all of it, but yeah, basically... Uh, yeah, film up with deals. I'm not going to go into that. Yeah. So if you watch Universal films on HBO, like Hobbs and Shaw, uh, sorry, that's not going to last. Fast and Furious 10 probably won't be on HBO after theaters. So time to subscribe to Peacock. Do you have anything else to say? Not Peacock-wise, but I do have one more thing to talk about news-wise. Okay. So we means? have some sad news uh, right now. Um, this is kind of breaking as, as we speak, but um, Robert Downey Sr., um, accomplished filmmaker and actor and dad of Robert Downey Jr., a.k.a. Iron Man, dead at 85. Yeah, and... Um, if you want to talk about this, because I linked the deadline or the NY Daily yeah. News article. Yep, this is an exclusive um, from them. So... Let me see. Yeah, yeah Robert this is, yeah. Robert Downey Jr. No, Senior. Robert Downey Senior. Let's get that right. Iconic filmmaker of great through anti-establishment classic films such as Putney Swope and Greaser's Palace died early Wednesday morning in his sleep at his home in New York City. His wife told the Daily News. Downey, who turned 85 last month and has been battling Parkinson's Parkinson's disease, also appeared in the movies Boogie Nights. Magnolia, and To Live and Die in L.A. Mm -hmm. The filmmaker, actor, and producer, and writer was a lifelong New Yorker and the husband of best-selling author Rosemary Rogers and father of actor Robert Downey Jr. A heartbroken Robert Downey Jr. told the news, I will miss him forever. Rogers is at home with, da with Downey Sr. when he died. He succumbed after suffering from Parkinson's for more than five years. Uh, last night, Dad passed peacefully in his sleep after years of and during the ravages of Parkinson's, Downey Jr. wrote in Wednesday in an Instagram tribute, he was a true Maverick filmmaker and remained remarkably optimistic throughout. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. So sad. That's, I feel so bad. Yeah. According to my stepmom's calculations, they were happily married for just, for just over 2,000 years. The our main actor continued, Rosemary Rogers, Downey, you are a saint, are in our thoughts and prayers are with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Downey's ashes will will scatter by the family at Rockaway Beach near Godia's Pub, where he liked to say he misspent his youth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that is a significant loss. Let's. I don't know what else he. Let me actually get us his IMDb real quick. Just want to see what else he did. 
Okay, Robert Downey Sr. Robert Downey Sr. had to live and die in L.A. was one of them. Let's see. Who unites the I'm family? I'm also looking this up, by the way. His last credit as an actor was Saturday Night Live as himself. Oh, wow. Let's see here. He was in the Twilight Zone, the 80s Twilight Zone. Oh. Mm -hmm. His last movie credit was Tower Heist. As, and, well, last movie yeah. credit as an actor is Judge Ramos. Which was, 2011, that was a, yeah. That was a good movie. That was a good movie. Let's see. Yeah, I recognize Twilight Zone from the 80s. Um, let's see here. None of these movies I recognize other than that. Um, I'm, I'm looking at his Wikipedia, by the way. So, yeah, that's a lot of uh, film credits. Yep. Also as a cinematographer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did shorts. May he rest in peace. Yes. What she said. Okay. I... One more... So maybe one or two more things. I I have to talk about Zack Snyder. So last week we talked about Zack Snyder's Justice League yep. and that sort of stuff. But now we're going to be talking about him and Netflix. His last movie that he did was Army of the Dead. That's on Netflix right now. I do recommend it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's this new movie that he's planning to do called Rebel Moon, which that sounds like a really cool title. Hmm. Snyder will co-write and direct the intergalactic adventure that is inspired by Japanese filmmaker, oh boy, oh. Akira Kurosawa. Oh. And Star Wars. That's a great combination. Oh my god. That's a combination. Oh my for the god. Ages. Wow. Wow. Okay, you you just intrigued me <laughs> as a Star Wars fan. I just think. Wow. Oh, my God. Zack Snyder has gone from zombie apocalypse in ancient Greece to nightmares in Metropolis. Now the filmmaker is heading into faraway galaxies. <laughs> Snyder has set his, set his next, next project, an epic sci-fi fantasy titled Rebel Moon that he is co-writing and will direct and produce for Netflix, the home of his most recent hit, Army of the Dead, and it reteams the filmmaker with many of the creative colleagues of his past original ventures. Snyder's co-writing the script with Army co-screenwriter Shay Hatton and Kurt Johnstead, who co-wrote 300. Good movie, by the way. Snyder's stylish sword and sandal flick adapting the Frank Miller comic. Uh, Snyder and Johnstead will receive story by credits. Mm -hmm. And he will produce with wife and producing partner Deborah Snyder via the duo Stone Quarry. That's her production company. Uh, along with longtime principal Wesley Collar, Eric Newman who produced Snyder's 2004 feature debut, Dawn of the Dead, as well as movies ranging from Children of Men and Project Power to Bright, and the upcoming Spiderhead is producing via his banner, Grand Electric. Grand, Grand Electric Sarah Bowen will exec produce. Rebel also puts Snyder back in business with Netflix's Scott Stuber, who oversaw Dawn of the Dead in his then role of vice chairman of Universal and was instrumental in bringing, uh, in, bringing in Army of the Dead. The story is set in motion when a peaceful colony on the edge of the galaxy is threatened by the armies of a tyrannical regent named Balisarius. Desperate people dispatch a young woman with a mysterious past to seek out warriors from neighboring planets to help them make a stand. This is me growing up as an Akira Kurosawa fan, a Star Wars fan, Snyder tells the Hollywood Reporter. It's my love of sci-fi and a giant adventure. My hope is that this also becomes a massive IP and a universe that can be built out. Rebel finds the germs in it, of its origins in a Star Wars pitch the filmmaker had developed a decade ago. It was a more mature take on the universe created by George Lucas that didn't move beyond any meaningful, meaningful conversations after the Walt Disney Company acquired Lucasfilm in 2012. At one point, he and Newman, who was behind Narcos and Narcos Mexico, went down the path of making it a series, but it was as a feature that he felt its true potential lay. He, re he began reworking the idea with Johnstad and dove in at the same time as he began making Army of the Dead, bringing in that movie's co-scribe, Hatton. The latter, at 27, had quietly become an in-demand franchise writer, de deepening the world of John Wick for Lionsgate by working on the third and upcoming fourth and fifth installments. Oh my god, we're doing Atomic 5. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to read all of this, but uh, let's see. I spent the last two or three years building out this universe. Every corner has to be painted in. I've been doing designs, constantly drawing and 
really cultivating its fertile ground to make this world fully realized. Army was viewed by 72 million people in its first four weeks, according to Netflix, landing in the streamer's top 10 most watched movies. Wow. Even before its May 14 release, Snyder and Stone Quarry had a German language prequel movie and an anime series in production, making Army not just an original property, but a franchise. Rebel will be another IP and a hope for franchise like for, for Netflix, which is building its arsenal in the age of the streaming wars, which I think when Knives Out comes out, for Netflix, that's going to be huge. That is going to be huge. Yeah. The feature will be Snyder's, Snyder's, next, Snyder's next movie, and the hope is to begin production in early 2022. I've been working on this on the side for so long, it's pretty far along, he says. All this unfurls since Snyder has one of the biggest years in his filmmaking career. On top of his, on top of Army and his new project, he also saw his version of Vision of Justice League restored and make a splashy debut on HBO Max. And the movie's recent international release on DVD and Blu-ray saw it catapult to the top of the sales charts in several countries, France and Brazil among them. Right? Yeah, let's not go into that. I'm excited. Yeah, this is this intrigued me because uh, I, I too, I, for those who don't know, I am a huge Star Wars fan. If you, if you guys couldn't tell, if you don't, got, if you don't follow me on social, if you don't follow me on social media, you. You're missing out on my Instagram content because I've been posting a lot of like exciting photo shoot stuff. But yeah, I am a huge Star Wars fan, and this this is intriguing me. Like this intrigues me. Me too. I'm wearing a Star Wars shirt right now, kind of, sort of. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, you are most icely cantina. Yeah, it's a custom shirt. I will probably provide the link in T public for those who want to see it. Nice, nice. Yeah. I'm wearing my Avengers shirt because Loki came out today, and I gotta represent the Avengers somehow. Yes, I, I like Snack Snyder. I think there's, uh, he's had his hits and misses. Batman v Superman was kind of like in between. Uh, 300 was good. Army of the Dead was okay. I mean, I, mean, I liked it, but not his best work. I loved his vision of Justice League. The original cop, I guess the Whedon version of that was not as great, but mm-hmm. the yeah. Zack Snyder v- vision is perfect. I love it. Even though it's long, a lot of people seem to love that, and I'm hoping to watch that at some point, but unfortunately, I don't have HBO Max, so I can't watch it. I'm probably going to buy the, the film bo- physical, so if I... Maybe I'll 4K. let you borrow it. I mean, I don't have a 4K player, might, they, but they, I can They'll probably, probably come with a Blu-ray, too. Okay. Because they, they usually do that. They come with both. Yeah. I'm... S- this sounds like a really good concept. I, it sounds like Snyder's really passionate about this, and I love when filmmakers dive into something that they've been working on perhaps for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I remember when Nolan did, before Nolan did Inception, he's been working on the idea for it for 10 years. This could be big. Mm-hmm. So, we'll see. Okay. We have one more story that, do you want to talk about this? It's about Stephen Dorff. Uh, Stephen Dorff, oh, Blade. Yeah, so he bas- oh. Oh, he bashes the upcoming Black Widow. Oh, I haven't heard about this. Do you want to talk about it? I haven't. No, you can talk about it. I I don't know anything about this. <laughs> this is... Go for it, Jack. This is Go for not it. funny. This is not oh, fun. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. True detective actor Stephen Dorff took several swings at Hollywood in a candid interview published in today's UK's... and Today in UK's The Independent, blasting the 2021 Oscars broadcast. Oh, like, my God. Oh, my... <laughs> what? That was a good broadcast. It's easily the best what? of the award shows that they did. Oh, my God. Okay, continue on. Likening feature film Black Widow to a bad video game. And, I mean, if he doesn't like Black Widow, that's fine, but I'm going to uh-huh. get more into this. And expressing embarrassment for the Marvel movie star Scarlett Johansson. I still hunt out the good <laughs> because I don't want to be in Black Widow. Or send the interview. It looks like garbage to me. It looks like a bad video game. I'm embarrassed for those people. I'm embarrassed for Scarlett. I'm sure she got paid five, seven million bucks, but I'm embarrassed for her. I don't want to be in those movies. I really don't. I'll find that kid director that's going to be the next Kubrick and I'll act for him instead. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Let me just say something. I want to be a director one day. As of, as of now, I'm just going to say this to Steven Dorff. I'm not the next Stanley Kubrick. Uh, next, please. I'm good. I don't. Th- I don't want to make this. I hope this is just like a one-time thing. Yeah, me too. No, if this is gonna be. 
<laughs> his behavior from here on out. Oh boy. I hope part of me hopes he never finds work again. Same. This yeah, this does not look good. Uh, I mean, let me just put it this way. I don't care if he doesn't like Black Widow. Mm -hmm. The way he says it, it's in poor taste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this come this comes off as, oh, there shouldn't be a Marvel movie led by a female hero. Like, a lot of people hated Captain Marvel for that. Well, not a lot, but some people did. I don't think it's just necessarily but, that i think it's just like the way the mcu is now in terms of yeah, their, yeah. how they stylize their movies mm -hmm. like it just feels like uh like it's too expensive maybe i don't know mm. some dude bros just have a problem with that i guess yeah let's see black widow opening in theaters this friday is the first moral entry to focus on johansson's title character finally the actress has in, appeared in seven installments in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Dorf said he has no regrets over his career choices, including choosing to star in John Waters' 2000 comedy Cecil B. Demented over some shitty movie that his agents recommended. Why wouldn't I do a John Waters movie? He told a UK publication. The other movie sucks. And they're like, well, it's not going to do anything for your career or money-wise, but I'm going to go to Con and we're going to have a standing ovation. And kids around the world, our students and John Waters fans are going to worship this movie which they do to this day oh my god why wouldn't i do that so i fired those agents holy cow this guy's this 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 guy's just going off let me just okay I let's let's not read everything he says but i think we got the picture i actually i need to say this i need <laughs> okay go for it go this, for it because this is like the last part of the art article right. i skipped it so okay good I don't know. I skipped it and I'm going back to it. Okay. The backbeat star currently appearing in mixed martial arts films and battled. Interesting title. Also casti uh, castigated the Academy Awards. This year's Oscars were the most embarrassing thing I've ever seen. Dorf said, okay, there have been better ceremonies, but if you've seen the Golden Globes this year, it's 10 times worse. Uh, my business is becoming a big game show. You have actors. Okay. I love game shows. You're an idiot. Uh, you you have actors that don't have a clue what they're doing. You have filmmakers that don't have a clue what they're doing. We're all in these little boxes on the on these streamers. TV, film, it's all one big cluster of content now. That's all. Um, I got nothing. The, this dude needs to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> just by this reading dude. this, just by reading this article, man, like. I almost didn't even just, want to talk about this. Just, just, just enjoy movies, and if you don't like it, then that's on. That's like your opinion, but don't like express that hatred for like news related you're things. You're like, in the you're, industry. You're, yeah, you're in the industry, and if you like do this, you're gonna like not get a lot of jobs yeah. doing that. You think you're gonna work, we're gonna get to work with Scarlett Johansson ever again? My God! You think you're gonna ever get to work with Kevin Feige? Mm -mm. You think you're gonna ever get to work with Disney? Mm. Who that's knows? on you, buddy. <laughs> that's, Sorry. That's yeah. This is why. Wow! I literally just had something to say. Oh my God! I, take a chill pill, man. Yeah, take, take a chill pill, man. Uh, what a great way to end end this off. <laughs> <laughs> end this podcast off, man. This this movie, man. This yeah, this really does feel like a movie. And your game show insult, shut up. I love game shows. I've loved them all my life. So That's it. That's it for news from me. So that, that's about it. I was gonna say something yeah. else, but I literally I just got almost having a temper tantrum at this point that I almost forgot what I was gonna say. So I think that's it for <laughs> episode three, unless I literally remember what I was gonna say. Yep, that's it. Yeah. So Millie, you wanna uh, plug anything? You can follow me on Instagram at Millie underscore Halperin, Twitter at M-E underscore Halperin, and you can also follow the Star Wars blog and podcast. I I am in uh, hollandatmarauders.com. All the social medias are on that website, and that's it for me. Okay, and while I'm here, you can follow me on Twitter at Jack Drees. That's my full name, uh, J-A-C-K-D-R-E-E-S. You can find me on Instagram at Real Scene Before. That is Real, uh, R E A L Scene, S C E N E, Before, B E F O R E. 
And you can also find me on, uh, speaking of seen before, you can go to flicknar.com. That is F-L-I-C-K-N-E-R-D.com. That is my official blog and website for all my movie reviews where, let's say, I get on rants as well, just like Steven Dorf, but I at least try to control my temper a little bit. Chill pill, man. Yeah. I, I, at least make, I at least make fun of myself when I go a little too far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... If you want to see my reviews, I currently am doing a Pirates of the Caribbean review series called Pirates of the Caribbean, The Chester Reviews. I have my uh, next few films, uh, film reviews coming out in that series. My Black Widow review will probably be up soon, if not already up. I'm not sure if I'm going to put this up first or Black Widow up first. We'll see what happens. But either way, please follow me. Subscribe. Also go to my YouTube channel, Jack Drees. Oh, yeah. I also have a YouTube channel, Millie Halprin. That's it. Yep. Mine's Jack Drees. Please subscribe. If you're watching us on YouTube, please leave a like. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. All right. So. See you guys mean? next week. Yeah, see, see you guys later. Or, yeah, whenever. Yep. All right. And that's episode three of Cineology. Peace out, everyone. Bye. You have just listened to Cineology, a Melrose, Massachusetts television production. You can find Melrose, Massachusetts television on Facebook and Twitter at MMTV3 on Vimeo at Vimeo.com slash MMTV3 on SoundCloud at SoundCloud.com slash MMTV3 on YouTube at YouTube.com slash user slash MelroseMATV and if you want to learn more go to MMTV3.org